As the weeks roll on and Hytale's in-game footage and images continue to drop, I think everyone in the community is getting into that mindset again of, well, what next? Would you believe it? We've had over 30 postcards now. In fact, we'll be analyzing another three more today, and with it quickly approaching that six month mark since the last blog post, plus the addition of a large amount of new team roles, what does this mean for the timeline of Hytale? Welcome back to Quebec Corner. My name is Connor, and today on Hytale News Updates, we break down and analyze three new awesome in-game shots, one being some excellent video footage, a new team position reveals some clues about the game's release period, and I finally dedicate some time to talking about the Hytale beta, with the usual Twitter highlights at the end. Now, I seldom bring up release dates or the Hytale beta because I know it's a very fragile topic. I don't want to give people false hope, and I don't want to speculate on every little detail and clickbait you guys. So trust me that what I have to say in this video is coming from a place of careful, honest thinking and facts. Also subscribe. I struggle with setting up multiplayer servers due to all the messiness and hardware stress, but with just one virtual private server from Server Pro, I can easily host a bunch of my favorite games. Simply by choosing my package, the location and using a one-click installer, my game is ready to play. They offer powerful servers not just for Minecraft, but popular titles like Rust, Among Us, Valheim and Gmod, which are now all available too. Each VPS comes with DDoS protection, so you and your friends can safely enjoy the games you love the right way. And if you have any issues, their dedicated support team is there to solve them. For more info, head to the link in the description below and click the VPS tab. Back to the video. Let's jump straight into this week's postcard, which is actually some video footage coming from the underground of Zone 1. This juggling goblin is one of the hostile races that will be scattered around the ruins and early prefabs of the game. They're known for being a little explosive and chaotic, but in this image it appears there's a bit more of a fun-loving nature being expressed. The description reads, tread softly in this long abandoned mine and you might glimpse some unexpected behavior. So what does this tell us? First off, tread softly. I've been playing a lot more Skyrim recently and to me this almost certainly confirms that a stealth system is still in the works. The idea that you could be unseen, causing mobs to idle into more natural animations and behaviors when they think no one's looking, I really love mechanics like that. The mine is also described as long abandoned, again backing up our theory that humans are more or less extinct from the world at the time we play the game. It's amazing to see just how far the goblin models have come since the trailer. We can see new particle effects coming off the bag of bombs on his back. The animations aren't janky, they look incredibly smooth too. Besides that, these wooden logs are capped by some sideways slabs. Perhaps this is a new type of building technique, a new architectural style. And of course, green earthly element crystals emanate in the background, setting a very interesting and vibrant tone for this place. On to the next image, as custodians of nature, Quebecs play and prosper within their leafy villages, all the while keeping vigilant watch over the deepest secrets of the forest. From this description, we get the impression that the Quebecs have something to hide, some ancient or plot-heavy mystery that needs to be unraveled, and I love it. We've talked about their magical abilities, their potential for power before, and this Zone 1 image clearly shows where we'll first find the Quebecs in their own villages. Some did question as to whether this may be more of a human-made encampment because of the chicken coop, but to that I say we've seen Quebecs raise rabbits as pets. Why wouldn't they be able to raise chickens and other livestock too? I mean, to be fair, that sounds quite adorable. We need an image of a Quebec riding a chicken now. We see various wooden benches and smaller furnishings, crops and berry bushes growing in the background, a young Quebec doing a photosynthesis. We get a closer look at the pink Quebec from the secret image that we mentioned the last news update, now on show for all to see. And if you'll notice, that Quebec is actually standing by a Quebec hut. You can see the doors there going into the tree. Last but not least, of course, we've got an elder in the forefront. We're told that the Quebecs are custodians of nature in this quote. They are the protectors of Zone 1 itself, perhaps even all of Orbis's natural and earthly aspects. The third postcard for this week finally gives us another glimpse at Zone 4, or the Devastated Lands as we've seen it called in concept. Specifically, an early cave. We know in this zone all the hot rocks and lava are on the surface, whereas down below leads to a more lush Jurassic environment kind of backwards from the rest of the zones. So this must be pretty early on in the descent, it seems. There's a lack of greenery or foliage, the atmosphere, the air itself is thick with smog, and the lighting has a flamey red tint. Ash flickers to the ground, no doubt a really cool particle effect to see in action. And one thing I am very hyped for in this game, how the mood is set, the atmosphere of each environment. 
Many people do believe we saw a new mob here, but if you're any kind of Hytale fan, you'll know the Ember Wolf was featured in the official trailer for a few seconds, and has apparently since had a retexture. There's some classic ores in the background, some rusty looking structures, but the main focus of attention in this image would certainly be the new player character. Debate has struck amongst the community as to whether this is a human with a horns accessory, or a new type of playable race altogether, some sort of demonic humanoid creature. While we can't say for sure, we do know that all the playable races in the game will need to share features for equality purposes, specifically something like the humanoid form. So this one would be a fairly easy transition for the teams to develop, simply adding horns and maybe some red eyes. Of course, they could always just be cosmetic though, as we've seen a myriad of equipable items in Hytale. Either way, there's some nice dreadlocks to look forward to as well. So, what of that new team position that supposedly hints at Hytale's release? Well, amongst many other jobs that went up this month, the production director was probably the most juicy in terms of job requirement details. Here we see that a production director reports to producers and helps shape more or less every area of the dev team, how things are planned, executed, and most importantly, how they approach the game's release. They have to evaluate and mitigate risks to the delivery of Hytale, establish high-level production standards, systems, and tools that are necessary to launch and continuously update the game. Necessary to launch. I don't think we've really heard that in a job description before. And they're not just helping with launch, they are identifying when and how to make critical changes to legacy tools and processes. Obviously, we know that Hytale's been in development for many years now, so of course a lot of their tools and ways of developing are going to be dated. This director is going to coach them in delivery of products and services, is going to maintain a roadmap to deliver the game and ensure that everything is top notch. They are the organizational scaffolding to allow for the delivery of the game. First off, this is huge because we very rarely see the Hytale release ever mentioned by the team, so seeing it here is a good sign. But also, we can deduce quite a bit from this. With the production director being necessary for the launch of the game, it means that they will need to be hired, onboarded, and a few months deep into their job before a full plan is even ready to roll out. If we assume that the perfect person isn't just going to walk up to Hypixel's offices, it's likely going to take about a month or two to read applications, go through the rigorous interview process, and then actually hire someone. After that, I'd say introducing that person to the team, the game engine, their role, the systems, and the existing plans that the team has would take at least another two months. And that, on top of all the time they'd need to actually begin to plan the release, the rollout, check in on all the other development areas, only then will they be at the point to finally start performing their duties to the fullest extent, which, by the looks of it, won't be until about September or November at the very early. Does that really leave enough room for a 2021 release? With all the other team positions being interviewed for right now, some in the community are starting to assume that summer 2022 will now be the official release period for Hytale. But of course, don't be downheartened, as that doesn't mean we won't get a beta this year. And that's what I wanted to address next. We all knew delays faced this year meant the goals of 2021 the team pitched to us originally may have been a little further off than expected. Their last blog post indicated they had struggled some due to worldwide events, and that they simply weren't ready to show off systems that were still being overhauled. We were told we could expect a combat blog post in the coming months or something akin to that. That was in December and now we're in May. Side note, for anyone who is or was expecting just a huge surprise release of the game, sadly that just ain't gonna happen. The team have been very clear that they're not pulling out any tricks, trying to hint any secrets. When the game's ready, they'll let us know and begin opening up more about it. That's always been their mantra. So the ramp up of content is still on the table. We'll likely get weeks if not months of warning and teasing before we ever see the game drop. Which is why so many people want to see that combat blog post, because it's a symbol that things are beginning to get juicy, that the game is very close. There's been a lot of conjecture about the possibility of a beta, but I did just want to restate, we know for a fact it's definitively going to happen. It was promised in the trailer, they continuously push and update the beta sign-up page. At this point, it's a given that we'll all get access to testing the game at some point. The beta is happening, it's just a matter of when. Obviously, there are a few factors here to consider. Last we spoke about this in December, the general consensus was we'd probably end up getting a combat blog post in the first quarter of the year, and then slowly the updates would ramp up as we got some big reveals. That hasn't happened. 
We have still had plenty of word from the team, they've appeared on the news, won awards, but we can clearly see that this year's postcards have demonstrated the changes some systems are still undergoing. Big changes. We're finally seeing the fruits of last year's labour when gazing at all of these new models, retextures and particle effects. Even the animations like the one we saw today. It's great to know that Hytale is getting more coats of shininess, but at almost six months, this promise of something big soon has quickly turned into that classic promise that gamers are all too used to from their devs. Now, this isn't all bad. First off, the situation could easily be remedied next week if Hytale put out a blog post and explained everything. We knew the team wanted to keep hype down. They wanted to be under the radar so they had less pressure to deliver a game they're proud of. But despite the team being active on Twitter, they've said everything else but what's on everyone's mind, which is what's happening with Hytale. I have faith that the team have learned from the last time they went silent. I don't think they'd preach improving communication only to end up doing the exact same thing, delaying and going silent for another half year. I think initially they did plan for a big combat showcase or blog post, maybe in January or February, even with some other spotlights mixed in there. But perhaps they decided that at this point they were more closer to the planned beta or another set of announcements that it was wiser to wait just a few more months to tell us. And yeah, there's no evidence of that, but to me, the evidence is the fact that the team still haven't addressed the silence. More roles than ever are still going up on the website. They have to be hiring more team members for something. Those guys need work. What better work than a worldwide beta's worth of bug fixes? Bug fixes are a huge part of a game's development after all. Hytale merch is being retweeted, so the game, team, passion, it's all still alive. To me, that says that something is coming. Not just the combat blog post, but another post, then another showcase, then and something huge. Something worthwhile that we can turn around and say, now this was worth waiting for. There was no point releasing a blog post in February or March because at that point they were so close to their May or June beta announcement that they thought, why not bulk all the announcements closer together? That sounds like a plausible explanation to me, avoiding the hype crashing down again in the middle of the year for those few months in between. They don't want to do that to their community again. There's always the possibility that something much bigger is going on, of course. Internal delays, remote problems, the pandemic effects, and many, many more factors could still be contributing to this game not coming out yet. But the fact that Hypixel Studios are now hiring for release and beyond tells me that they must have pretty much solidified their plans for what happens before that. I think their plans for the beta are pretty much sealed and confirmed, just waiting to be announced. Now, I only aim to do these timeline predictions every six months just to stay up to date. Historically, most of the community's date predictions have been wrong, and I also don't want to spam you guys with crazy guesstimates, but I figure a combat blog post or even a bigger announcement is due by the end of May, heading into June and summer. This would also be an undoubtedly great time to step to Minecraft, with them announcing the biggest part of the 1.17 update being delayed until December. Using new roles to put the game Game's development into perspective, I'd say the ideal new release date that we could be safe to hope for Hytale is summer 2022. Any later, and this wait may start to feel like an entire adventure in of itself. And if they didn't announce the beta this summer, would you be mad? Let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind, E3 is only a few weeks away. It is going to be digital, and while I don't think Hytale will show up on any big conference, E3 is partnered with Games Radar, a publication that has covered Hytale in the past. Who knows what's possible? They may even just time their own socials to announce in conjunction with a bunch of the other games that get announced on E3, riding that new release summer hype. In other news, Holly the Talent Acquisition posted an image of her family wearing some Hytale merch they were given, dare I say, officially? Funnily enough, the image was taken at Given's Wear. They were given Hytale merch to wear at Given's Wear. Ha! This is likely just a team thing, but still cool regardless. I'd love to rep one of these one day. Recently, I announced a Hytale-themed creative writing and fan art competition. This is something I've been doing regularly on the channel for a while now to help promote artists and up-and-coming talent, but I guess Noxie's tirade on me and all of Quebec kind continues, first starting with him adding the burning feature to the game, now with him mockingly posting not long after me about a competition for what a burning Quebec would sound like. I am horrified. H how could you? There were a few comical replies. Martin got me pretty oh, good with this one. Hot out here today, Mildred. Uh we also had this. <laughs> and we can't forget this. 
Someone has to put a stop to Kieran, Oscar, Polina, and Noxie's reign of terror. Someone on the team, if you're listening to this, then delete the burn Quebec code. Just delete it for all of us. Moving on, this week, two of my good friends, Exodus Ablaze and Radunes, with art from the amazingly talented Crimson Crow, hosted their very own Hightail Community Creatathon event, which, in a similar vein to Thankmas, gathered many community creators to chat live, this time with a huge focus on the community, including artists and creators, big and small, with spotlights of people's videos and support for pretty much everyone who's doing something Hightail right now. Even I sat down to do a Q&A with chat, Buddha, Propsy, and even the main Hightail tail accounts showed up to say hi, and uh, it, it was like 11 hours long, so was, there's that. Massive congrats to them and managing to stay so vigilant and entertaining. It's hype, I'm proud, good job, everyone should go check it out. Unfortunately, there is a lot of news to cover this week, so I'm going to be skipping out on the fan art spotlight, but we'll be back to it as usual in the coming weeks as we get more and more reveals about Hytale. If you want to get involved in either of those competitions that I mentioned earlier on, then make sure to join the Quebec Corner Discord server, linked down below. You can cop 50k merch at kwekwe.com, shout out to the awesome channel members for supporting, continue smiling, thank you for liking, subscribing, and thanks, as always, for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe, and and keep free.